Well, I think it's gonna fit. This is gonna be close. Stick around and we'll get right to it. You know, every time I do one of these battery upgrades, I think it's gonna be my last time, but these battery manufacturers keep coming out with larger capacity batteries in a smaller size. And well, here I am again, I guess about a year after I did this upgrade, getting ready to upgrade again. Now, originally I had uh, one 100 amp hour battery in this RV. That's what came with it when we purchased it. And I upgraded, uh, was that a 13? Yeah, 13 millimeter. I upgraded to a lithium iron phosphate battery shortly after we got this RV. Oh, I need to remember to turn off that battery. There we go, disconnected, now we're safe. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, so I upgraded it to a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and I ran that for about two years, I think it was, until I put these two mini 100 amp hour batteries in it. Now these are watt cycle uh, 100 amp hour mini uh, batteries in here. And the cool thing about these minis was I could fit two of these where that first group 31 pretty much filled up, well, not all of this case, but enough of it that I couldn't cram two of them in it. So going to the minis was really nice because then I could double my capacity and go from that uh, original 100 amp hour um, lithium iron phosphate to two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphates. Well, fast forward another year and Watt Cycle has done it again. They now have a, I think it's like 314 amp hour battery that's a mini version, and I think it's going to fit in here. Now, I've done my measurements on the case, uh, but there's a little bit of flimsy here, and eh, it's going to be hard to tell until I actually just get the battery in here and try to put it in place. Uh, these two were wired in parallel when I put them in, and these batteries have held up great so far. Really, only one time have I needed more than 200 amps of capacity, and that generally only happens if you're running days and days without sunshine. Now, we can't run the uh, AC or the microwave on batteries, and that's because of our limited um, inverter size in this, uh, in this RV. I think it only came with a 1,000 watt inverter when we bought it. And I probably need 3,000 in order to run the AC in the microwave. Trying to make sure I don't lose anything right here. Um, so at some point I may end up upgrading that, but after I just got that Mega 3 unit and I can leave it sitting in the truck, I don't know that I really need to upgrade the inverter. Well, at least not right now. So hopefully all of this is not going to be in vain and that 300 amp battery or 314, whatever it happens to be, is going to fit in this. I did do some playing with that battery. It took forever to get that thing charged. I think it only had like 38% battery in it. And the only charger that I have, well, I've got two of them, but it's a 20, yeah, 20 amp charger for those batteries. Well, you take 300 uh, amps and divide that out by 20 and yeah, well, it takes a little while. What I did though was I took both of those 20 amp chargers and actually stacked those together so that I was getting 40 amps at a time. Still took several hours, but that cut the uh, charge time down, uh, well, roughly by half. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these two batteries out and see if we can then get that one 300 amp hour battery in here. That is absolutely perfect. Still got some room over here to the side, that's okay. I know it's a little tall, but I'm pretty sure that cover is going to fit over this. But before we go to too much effort, oh, look at that. That is going to be perfect. So that's a 314 amp hour mini battery by uh, watt cycle and that is perfect if you've got one of these smaller trays on your RV now back to what I was saying about this battery a e, this thing is heavy it comes in at around uh, 60 pounds I'm trying not to short anything out right here uh, comes in at around 60 pounds 
I did not do a capacity test on this battery because my uh, test equipment only goes to 10 amps. And really to do a discharge test, you need to be pulling 0.1C, so that would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of 31 amps to get good readings out of it. So I'm gonna just have to trust Watt Cycle on this one that it is 314. I'm going to reprogram my uh, Bluetooth shunt that I've got in here, the Victor Animal, reprogram it to say 300 amp hour. So a little shy. This battery also comes with Bluetooth though built in. So with that, you can take the uh, Bluetooth app and the battery will also give you an idea of how much, uh, what its level is. It'll tell you how much uh, current is coming into it any, any given time and how much current is going uh, or being taken out of it at any given time. Now, let's see, I might actually need to pull that battery over this way just a little bit. Ah, there we go. I think that's going to be in the neighborhood of working. Still got to figure out how to get all this shoved down in there, but we are getting close. So, what did I do with that nut? Did I let that thing fall off the back when I moved that battery? I may have. That's all right. I got some extras if I can't find it. Oh, it's right there in front of me the whole time. Uh, just didn't see it. Forest for the trees or trees for the forest or however that goes. All right, let's go ahead and finish connecting this. But that Bluetooth app is going to give me a kind of a double check on this. My Bluetooth shunt is also going to be hooked up on this. Um, so it'll give us two different ways to kind of keep up and, uh, you know, keep a check on the battery. But I have been very pleased with the two 100 amp hour batteries that I've pulled out of here. Uh, like I said, we've had zero issues out of them. Those, I don't think, were the Bluetooth uh, edition. Oh, one more thing about their Bluetooth uh, app. The nice thing about it that Watch Cycle does is you don't have to have a, a uh, an account in order to use the app. So you don't have to give them your email address. You don't have to sign up for anything. Just uh, open the app, connect it to the particular battery, and you are good to go. That app does tell you how much is coming in, how much is going out. You can turn the charging on, you can turn the charging off, and you can even change the uh, BMS parameters inside the app. So uh, several nice advantages with running that app over some of the other companies that I have seen. Now, what did I forget to hook up? One of the positive lead. Oh, that would be important. That's the uh, positive lead that feeds the radios inside. So we definitely don't want to leave that one out right there. Let's go ahead and get that connected underneath this. Probably need to stop talking and actually do more work uh, before I forget to hook up something critical. Of course, it wouldn't have taken me long to have figured it out when I got inside and I didn't have any power for my radios. But let's go ahead and get this situated. And then we will reprogram the Bluetooth shunt because it thinks we only have 200 amps of uh, battery. We'll have to tell it that we're getting 300 now. And guys, I mean, think about it. That's just a little bit larger, still fits in my box, but gives me 50% more capacity. I just think that's phenomenal. And if you're watching this video during... Uh, Prime Days, you definitely want to take a check on it because they often run Prime Day specials on a lot of these batteries, the 100 amp hours and the 314 amp hours. And they've got several different ones. They've got some regular, uh, I think they've got a Group 24, maybe a Group 31, uh, but I'm really partial to these minis because I'm limited on how much space I've got available to me up here. But I think that is going to get me where I need to be. So let's see if we can get uh, the cover back on this and get this thing buttoned up. And I tell you what, the cover fits without any problem before we put those straps on because they're easy to get on. They're a bit of a pain to get off. I want to go ahead and activate this battery again. And then I'm gonna go inside and take a look at the solar charge controller and see what it says. And it looks like everything is going well with that. I did see it flash there for just a second. That happened the last time I changed batteries out. So I think it just takes it a few minutes to uh, figure out exactly what's going on. Last time, uh, by the next morning, I was not having any issues whatsoever out of this.
Okay, so in the uh, Bluetooth shunt controller app, let's go ahead and go up to settings and change this battery. Uh, let's see, where is that? Right there, very top, battery capacity. We're going to change that to be 300 amps. And that should take care of that. Looks like I also have an update to do, but we will get to that a little bit later. That should take care of everything that I've got to do other than just buttoning everything back up. So I'm looking forward to giving this battery a test. And uh, if you follow along with the newsletter, I'll do updates in it more than likely. I doubt I'll do another video on this particular battery. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.